Hey guys, it's me Flo. Yep, that's me waving at you guys. Now, if you like what you see on the screen with these digital art pieces, make sure to stay tuned because I'll show you how to create these cool pieces. Now I have a poster here and two CD covers. I thought it'd be cool to show you these techniques through these means because they're really fun and artsy. But of course, feel free to use these techniques on various kinds of projects. Now let's get started. First, what you want to do is open up Adobe Illustrator. Once you have Adobe Illustrator open up, um, the sizing doesn't matter as long as the size is at least like 2000 by 2000 pixel or more, it, that's perfect. Once you got that ready to go, you can go ahead and create a circle. Once you have this circle ready to go, you can go ahead and just put any fill, any color, doesn't really matter because we're going to change that anyways. And then click on the gradient button right there. Yeah. And then once you have that ready to go, you'll see the little circles come up. And then you'll see that you can change the different colors in the circle to create this really cool gradient effect. Now, this is, I think, one of the really cool key things in this technique because I feel like this gradient tool really makes it look really fun. Not even fun, but really interesting and gives it a really complex effect. So once you play around with it, which as you can see, I played around with it. And as you'll see throughout the video, I really kept playing around with it. So I will definitely say have fun with it and experiment with different color combinations. Once you're happy with that, all you have to do is open up Photoshop. And um, I would say for Photoshop, have something that's at least, again, over 2000 by 2000 pixel. Um, if you're doing the CD cover size, then I would say 2000 by 2000 pixel. But if you're doing the poster, I think I had this set up at 4,500 pixels by 2000 pixels, something along the lines. Um, once you have that ready to go, just go ahead and drag that circle we created in Adobe Illustrator and put that into Adobe Photoshop. Now, once you've got that ready to go, you can go ahead and click on that little brush you see there on the left hand side once you click on the brush there you'll see uh, a little box pop up and then you'll have the selection to click on the mixer brush this is super fun now maybe you've seen this in my other tutorials i talk about this a lot once you have your brush sized up and ready to go make sure you go onto your keyboard and press down on alt or option depending if you're on a Mac or a PC and also press down simultaneously at the same time your mouse and once you press down over the actual gradient circle you'll see this little circle kind of pop up as well click on that and then a swatch It'll, a swatch will be done and essentially it will basically take kind of I guess you could say like a snapshot essentially and you'll be able to paint with that gradient swatch and then you can go ahead and start painting the whole screen now if it doesn't look nice and smooth you want to make sure you go into the brush settings and make sure your spacing is at one percent because if it's not at one percent the the brush swatch will kind of look like it has ridges it's ready to go make sure you have a layer uh, layer added and then you can go ahead and start just painting away and having a lot of fun with this. This is such a fun, fun tool. And you can uh, play around with the brush to make it more hard or you can make it more soft. And that kind of gives it that fuzzy, or not fuzzy, that kind of blurry effect. And it creates a cool, different kinds of effects depending on how hard or soft you go on the brush. And then what you want to do is make sure you go at the top and click on filter. <laughs> Sorry, my screen got cut off. But yeah, you go at the top, you press on filter and then the drop down menu comes up and then click on a liquify. And then once you click on liquify, you have a screen that comes up and you have a variety of different types of liquify effects. And I'm just clicking on the swirly one, but you can try the other ones as well. And then it starts to give you this really cool effect. Uh, this effect is just like, I don't know, really soothing and fun to look at. So make sure you experiment with this. And then once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and click next. I mean, okay, yeah, click okay at the bottom. And then when you're happy with that, we will now continue on to the next step, which is essentially playing around with the hue and saturation effect and the curves tool. Now, if you go right at the bottom, 
there will be a little circle there. It looks like a yin and yang circle. And you can click on hue and saturation. And again, if you're not happy with the look of the liquify, you can go back and keep like experimenting until you get the effect that you want. And then play around with the settings of the hue and saturation. Let's say you want to play around with the coloring. And if you want to play with the hues, the saturation, even the lightness and the darkness, you can create this really cool effect that you'll kind of see on the screen that I'm going to be doing. Um, it's essentially where you can like really hike up the saturation and then lower the lightness so it's a little bit darker but then when you hike up the saturation it gives it this kind of cool like dim but kind of neon effect so that's a really cool effect and the lightness slider is actually going to come in real handy soon enough um, but i'll get into that a little bit later once you're happy with what you have you can go ahead and we can move on to the next step now it's not necessary that you even use the hue and saturation but i just wanted to show you like what you can do and how you can change the colors because i think this is a cool handy tool sometimes um, you can find some interesting color combinations through this little effect um, now what we can do next is add the text and i am using the text that i'm using i can just link it below if you guys are interested i am using old english 5 and i am using keep on trucking i believe um yeah so you can use whatever <laughs> whatever typefaces and fonts that you want i just really love this kind of black letter style i'm so in love with it but i'm also starting to get into these other kind of retro vibe fonts so, um yeah let me know what are your favorite retro fonts below i'm curious to know also a side note if you want to get the stroke effect like i have make sure you go into the text layer and then once you click on the text layer you go on the right hand side at the top and you'll see there'll be a little um, area where it says fill you can just turn off it'll say 100 percent, and you can just make it zero and then you'll have just the pure stroke now to make the text have a little bit more of a pop what i'm doing is creating this kind of blur effect this kind of like black blur effect but with like a lowered opacity so essentially what i did is i created the oval with the circle tool and filled it in with black and then if you go at the top and click on filter and click on blur and then press gaussian blur what you'll have is like this blur effect and you can adjust it as much as of the blur that you'd want and i think yeah so you can adjust it as you want i would say you want it to blend in with the kind of backdrop and not stand out too much i mean depending on what you want um i think it just makes the text pop a little bit more and it looks nice with the contrast of the other colors so this is optional as well but i think it looks really good now here's a cool little trick or a technique that you can use to create this cool little highlights to make the work pop a little bit more so when you go into your hue and saturation layer you i would say make sure you have um, the lightness scale towards the darker end this kind of helps to give that kind of um it will kind of just make sense with the effect that we're going to do so if it's a little bit darker as you can see whether it's on the fly high piece or even the deep dive piece um what you can go ahead and do is grab a the grab a eraser and then make sure the eraser is kind of like soft and then make sure the opacity is a little bit lower and then you can go ahead and click make sure you're on the the white square or if you want to just use the blur effect that we have done you can use it on there as well and then go ahead and start kind of you could see you're racing out the areas that you want highlighted as you can see and then it kind of creates this cool effect where it looks like it's kind of like popping out and gives us almost this like kind of shiny like blur effect which i think looks really cool i hope that explanation makes sense maybe it sounds a little bit confusing if you guys have any question make sure to comment below and i will try to make sure and answer all of your questions now the next thing I ended up doing was adding some stars on the fly high poster and I actually used this cool starry star paint brush. Wow, I can't speak English. Starry paintbrush. And I'll actually put the link below if you guys want to use it. 
And then, yeah, I just kind of played around with it. I thought it kind of looked nice on the fly high type of poster with the like, the, it just really had this nice shiny effect. And I felt like, ooh, this kind of makes it, makes it look a little bit more magical. So yeah, you can go ahead and add that if you like. And then the next thing that I ended up doing was actually looking for some cool kind of, um, backdrops or we could say filters almost like filters that kind of give it this kind of old school effect or this kind of scratched up effect or something like that like that makes it look kind of retro like I don't know I don't want to say crumpled paper but just like just to give it this kind of retro kind of filter with the way it looks I don't even know how to explain it like there's one that I used that was kind of like like kind of look dotted which kind of made me think of this like 60s vibe and then there's another one that looks kind of like it's a distressed kind of background so again you don't have to add this but i just think it gives us this cool retro feel and it adds a nice texture to it so i'll link that below as well these are free backgrounds that i had found online now the next thing that i did was i ended up kind of playing around with the text and manipulating the text to give it this kind of cool wavy look i just went up into the filter and again went to liquify but i was just on the text layer and then again i used that same swirl that we used before but just on the text now you can go as crazy as you want but i thought i'd make it a little bit kind of a little bit more spicy by adding this kind of cool little swirl and i don't know it kind of gives it more of this kind of like trippy retro vibe that i just feel like it kind of flows really well together so i added that you don't need to add that but i feel like it adds a kind of fun touch to it and uh, yeah if you do use these filters and these backgrounds make sure you play around with the blend modes and the opacity to get the desired effect that you want and kind of experiment around with it that's kind of what i did to f just find the actual effect a desired effect that i actually wanted because some of some of the filters looked really cool on certain kinds of blend modes but some of them looked bad so just make sure to play around with it and yeah, that's the gist of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, this is just part one of the video. I was going to make a whole huge video, but I thought it'd be too much for you guys. So this is part one. There is a second part. Now, these are the static images. If you want to actually make these digital art assets kind of come alive and, you know, make your digital art a little bit more exciting we can turn these into videos and use some cool effects on after effects and make these pieces pop more and add a little bit more of excitement i know some of you are curious about you know some of the after effects things that i do and things i post on my stories so i thought why not show you guys how to do it because i think it's something that's really fun and yeah it's just something that i enjoy doing and i think it looks really cool so i hope you guys stay tuned for that make sure to subscribe if you're interested in that and i hope this video was helpful have a great day